Number nine. If 14.5 kilojoules of heat were added to 485 grams of liquid water, how much would its temperature increase? Okay. All right. So what I like to do is I like to just list out what was given to me in the problem, right? I got your work from left to right if you want to do it this way. So let's see. If 14.5 kilojoules of heat, right? They gave me a heat value and I run through all of the units that I know up until this point in the, in the chemistry course, right? Heat is a Q value. So I know that Q equals 14.5 kilojoules. Okay. Now they're saying that we have this amount of heat and it was added to 485 grams of liquid water, right? Gram is a unit of mass. So I have an M value. So I write that. S equals 485 grams. Okay. I keep going, right? And now here comes the question. How much would its temperature increase? Temperature is a T value, right? So this is definitely a T. And they're telling us that the temperature is going to increase. So we just want to find a change in the temperature, right? They're telling us specifically that it's going up, but technically we just want to know how much does that temperature change? How much does it increase? So I'm searching for definitely a temperature because that's the question, right? And more specifically, I'm looking for the change in the temperature. Now let's pretend that we didn't know that, right? Let's pretend we don't really know that we're looking for a change in the temp, right? But we definitely know that we're looking for a temp. So I'm going to label that as X. Now you go through all of your formulas that you know in your, in your mind, in which you have a formula for a Q and M and a T. Hmm. I'm searching, I'm searching, I'm searching. Uh, there's only one, there's only one. And it's this guy, right? I'll put this one up atop here. It's Q equals MS Delta T. You might know it as Q equals MC Delta T. It does not matter. S and C are the same thing, but you see here, I have a Q, I have an M and I have a T. So I, I will be able to use this formula. The only thing is what, what is an S, right? And what is this triangle sign? Well, let's work from left to right. The Q, just like we said before, is the heat. It's the heat energy required. But now we got to dive a little deeper because if we're using this formula, the Q has to be in joules. Uh-oh, they gave it to me in kilojoules. So what do you think is the first thing that we got to do? Yeah, we got to convert from kilojoule to joule. So I'm just going to make a mental note of that. The M, just like we talked about, is the mass. And if I'm using this formula, it's got to be in grams. But that checks out. The S, which they didn't talk about in my question, is the specific heat. Specific heat units are in joules per gram times degree Celsius, right? That's a J. And the specific heat is for the specific uh, molecule, compound, or element that's in your question. In this case, they told us that it was of liquid water. So they told us that I have H2O and that's a liquid. So I need to know the specific heat of the liquid water. Now, this is the only one that usually your professor or your teacher wants you to memorize. And that's this one down here. The specific heat of liquid water, H2O as a liquid, is always 4.184 joules per gram Celsius. So that's the number. I know this number now. So I can just add it to my list. 4.184. If you want to use the units, that's fine. Joules per gram degree Celsius. And now this thing, right? The delta is actually a change. The delta T combined is the change in temp. And if you're using this formula, it's in degrees Celsius. So that's the question. How much would its temperature increase? How much would it change? Increase is just a more specific way of saying change. You're telling, you know, the, the person who's figuring this question out, you guys, right, that it's going up. It's not going down. But still, I just need to find that change. So now I'm solving for a delta T. 
And now I have everything else. Q equals MS delta T. Let's go for it. But I have a jewel. I need the Q in joules. They gave it to me in kilojoules. So the first thing I got to do is I got to convert 14.5 kilojoules to joules. How do I do that? Well, 14.5 kilojoules, right? If you're starting at kilojoule, I gave this little uh, handful tool here, right? Or trick to just memorize. If you're starting at kilojoules, KJ, and you need to go to joules, all you got to do, you're going this way, right? So all you got to do is take that kilojoule value and times by a thousand and you'll get the equivalent amount of joules. This is just an SI unit conversion. So I'll take my 14.5 and just multiply it by 1,000. Alternately, you can take the decimal and move it to the left, or sorry, move it to the right three and just plug in zeros for your placeholders. Either way, you'll get the same answer. So this is equivalent to 14,500 joules. Don't be scared of big numbers, especially if the unit joule is next to it. Usually there's going to be a massive amount of joules. That's the Q value. So 14,500, that's a comma, equals your mass, which they gave me, 485. Now, I don't put my units in my calculations when I do the actual formula because I just do a check. You know, I say, okay, you know, it's got to be in grams. Is it in grams? Yes. So I just put the number. Let's move on to the next thing. I have to times it by the specific heat, and that's the number that you were required to know. They didn't give you that information, 4.184 for liquid water. And then we just find out the delta T, the change in the temp, and that's what we're solving for. So I'm just going to label that as X. Now we just use our algebra, right? So 14,500 equals... 485 times 4.184, we get 2,029.24, and that's being multiplied by X. You want to get rid of, or, you know, move it to the other side. You want X by itself. So I will divide by this whole thing on both sides. Cancel that out, and we get X equals, which is the delta T, the change in the temp, right? Because that's what we said over here. So we're going to find that temperature change. So 14,500 divided by 2029.24. Looks like lowest number of sig figs is 3 when I started, so my answer should be in 3 sig figs. So 7.15. And that's degrees Celsius, because the delta T is in degrees Celsius. And that is my answer. The change in the temperature is 7.15 degrees Celsius. That's how much the temperature would need to increase. It needs to go up 7.15 degrees Celsius. Now, I don't know what my starting temp was, so I don't know what my start temp is, or my end temp. All I know is that to go from my start temp to my end temp, I had to increase by 7.15 degrees Celsius. So maybe I'll just say, you know, 7.15 degrees Celsius. So whether I started at 1 degrees Celsius and I ended at 8.15, or I started at 2 degrees Celsius and I ended at 9.15, the difference is the 7.15. We don't know what the start temp or the end temp is. All we know is that the increase is 7.15 degrees Celsius. And that's what the question asked for. So guys, hopefully this helped. Memorize this equation, all right? And always, you know, list out what you have. It just makes everything nice and neat and gets you organized, all right? So I hope you guys keep studying hard. Let me know in the comments if this helped. Click the subscribe button, that will help us out. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that. Hope you guys have a great day, all right? And the new year's coming up as I'm doing this video, so I hope you guys have a great new year, all right? See you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.